experiencing children can be congenital or acquired and range from asymptomatic to life-threatening. Children with heart conditions often need specialized care, which at times can be expensive. We're joined in studio this evening by Dr. Feni Shirika, who is a pediatric cardiologist, to give us an understanding on heart health. Doctor, good evening and welcome to the show. Thank you. It's my privilege to be here tonight. Thank you so much for being here. To start with, perhaps we can talk about what pediatric cardiology is. Uh, pediatric cardiology is a very highly specialized field under pediatrics. So in general, we have to be pediatricians first and then specialize further to become pediatric cardiologists. And what we do is we do um, uh, manage um, uh, uh, heart diseases in children as well as adults born with congenital heart disease. Now, just to emphasize, congenital heart disease is a structural defect of the heart that people are born with generally, and it's mostly genetic. Uh, most of the heart conditions are complex genetic processes. It's a very complex uh, process when the heart is forming, uh, when the babies are conceived. Um, so our job is basically to make a diagnosis which starts antenatally when the mothers are pregnant uh, and then continue postnatally uh, immediately after birth. But the, the problem with Namibia is that the patients are presenting late. Um, uh, and so we have to make a diagnosis, uh, institute medical management, and then um, uh, refer the patients to the surgeons on Mary's depending on the, on, the, on, the, on the heart disease they might be having. So it's a very complex field and it's very diverse. It's a huge spectrum. One lesion can range from uh, uh, one simple defect to another uh, uh, complex end of the spectrum. So it's an extremely highly specialized field. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How common are cardiovascular risks in children? Um, so so our, our kind of uh, heart disease is congenital, as I said, is mostly genetic. Right. Of course, there are environmental factors that uh, are attributable uh, uh, to, 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 to the incidence of uh, congenital heart disease. And most of this, uh, we call them epigenetics. They cause the genes to behave in a manner um, uh, uh, that then causes um, uh, uh, abnormal manner, in other words, that then causes um, heart defects. Unlike acquired heart disease in adults, which is attributed to smoking and lifestyle um, uh, behaviors, this is completely different, and uh, most of the times, actually, you cannot prevent it. But there are new, um, uh, uh, there's new understanding on how to prevent uh, congenital heart disease, but in general, it's something that is beyond our control, and that is perhaps what it's the the, the, the complexity right. uh, into the whole issue. Yeah. You mentioned earlier that uh, you know sometimes you make antenatal diagnose, diagnosis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in, in that case, w what interventions do you then you know uh, provide, or uh, you have to wait until the baby is born? Yeah. So basically, it's important to make the diagnosis intensely because then you can plan depending on what the patient is having to see whether you where exactly you deliver in the first place, but also what type of management to institute when the patient is born. So what we do then, so we get a, a, a set of uh, patients we call high-risk patients for congenital heart disease. And generally, the mothers that have uh, children with congenital heart disease, diabetic mothers, uh, 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 mothers that were taking alcohol during, uh, during pregnancy, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, mothers that have been ex exposed to teratogens, which are in the form of drugs or uh, some other environmental exposures. So all those uh, patients then come to us and then we look at them. So we start generally at 12 weeks of a gestational age. Um, and at that point in time, the heart has theoretically formed already and is starting to develop. So the first initial phase, uh, we do this examination at 12 weeks and then at 20 weeks. So the older the, 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 the embryo, the fetus grows, then it becomes a little bit technically difficult to actually conduct the examination right. uh, because the, the, the baby is so big and there's little fluid. So the precision and, uh, and the acquisition of images become a little bit challenging. So we do that in conjunction with uh, fetal maternal specialists, which, which are special obstetricians that are further specialized in uh, fetal maternal medicine. Yeah. But in general, if you do not have that, as like in Namibia, we then have to actually do it ourselves as uh, congenital cardiologists. How yeah. common are heart diseases in children? We're talking about under the age of 18, babies up until, you know, uh, teenage years. S speaking, you know, concerning Namibia. What are the statistics like there? Yeah, so, so that's very interesting questions. Thank you for that. The weird thing about Namibia is that it's a small population relatively by count, um, but the incidence and the prevalence of congenital heart disease is extremely high. 
um, uh, it, it is very atypical and actually, and that is why we are actually doing a lot to understand what exactly is causing this incidence and prevalence to be high. So in general, we have um, a general understanding in the world that at least one in a hundred patients are born with congenital heart disease. But in Namibia, I think we actually exceed that ratio by far. So uh, we have a database now, a complex database, which um, uh, uh, is affiliated to the University of Cape Town. We call it uh, Protea, it's part of the Protea project. Mm -hmm. um, so we are entering all our patients that we see with congenital heart disease and we start at the end of 2021 and we've got a lot of patients already um, mm -hmm. in that database. Um, now collectively over time we will have a total um, uh, prevalence and incidence uh, number and this is just part of the whole collective effort by the University of Cape Town which is now, because that's where I studied, um, to actually get the overall prevalence and, uh, and incidence of congenital heart disease in Africa because that data actually is not available. So we are working with data that is from other continents, which is typically unfortunate. Mm. Now, part of that database also, uh, or that project rather, is uh, genetics uh, uh, studies. Um, so when we enter the patients, we have chosen a cohort. I chose a cohort uh, typically with complex congenital heart disease. Uh, we do their genes, so it's a complex genetic kit that looks at 160 genes uh, uh, that we have taken. So we have capacitated uh, Namibia Institute of Pathology to actually isolate the DNA and then we work with South Africa, so we send it to the University of Cape Town. They will do an analysis and then they will return the data to us back and actually we are due for that feedback soon. So we did the first 50 patients from 2021 and we are waiting for the feedback uh, uh, actually next week. Uh, mm -hmm. So we've done the analysis already. So the whole point of this whole thing is generally, as I said earlier, to get the overall incidence of congenital heart disease per annum, let's say, uh, and overall prevalence of congenital heart disease in Namibia, as well as to contribute to the whole genetic uh, data bank for Africa. Uh, and we are including a lot of African countries and Namibia is just basically one of the participants and this is a great project, I must admit. Yeah. You mentioned earlier when a heart disease is not genetic uh, in adults, it's mostly attributed to lifestyle choices. Yeah. Uh, with children who aren't born with you know, heart diseases, also up until the age of 18, are lifestyle choices also you know, the contributing factor, the main contributing factor? And then perhaps onto that you can talk to us about you know, how parents, together with the help of experts, can promote you know, heart health. Yeah, so that's a very important question equally. Um, in adults, you also get a component of acquired heart disease called rheumatic heart disease, which is highly prevalent in Namibia. Now, that disease starts when the kids are younger and uh, sometimes under five years old, especially after three there, uh, because of the mechanisms that are involved in the pathogenesis of that particular disease. Mm -hmm. Now, so they start young and then if they are not treated, they develop a chronic cause. And again, it's a spectrum from mild to severe. So now this, the long-term cause then develops into rheumatic heart disease from acute rheumatic fever and that can cause incapacitating disability and morbidity as well as mortality, especially if not addressed on time. Now the other acquired uh, components are, again rheumatic heart disease, I must uh, retaliate that again people have got a genetic background and we have done studies in the past that looked at that and all those uh, families were found to have genetic uh, mm -hmm. problems, those patients that got to be affected. Now we've got other acquired heart diseases, COVID recently right. contributed to heart disease, coronary involvement, we call it Kawasaki, uh, as well as myocarditis, which is inflammation of the heart muscle, um, but it caused other things as well. But the good thing is that we've collected that cohort and that cohort actually, uh, we're noticing that uh, it's actually doing well long term as opposed to the traditional Kawasaki, which was caused by other viruses. Uh, that's just one spectrum of it. But then TB can also cause right. uh, pericardial disease, especially of the heart the lining that uh, covers the heart. Um, uh, uh, and equally, you've got um, other drugs, yeah. uh, for instance, um, chemotherapy drugs. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So we are getting a lot of that. And then other um, uh, 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 viral myocarditis, for instance, mm -hmm. a very incapacitating disease that uh, presents a form of frosty to severely symptomatic and even acute death. Um, so we've got a whole, whole spectrum and we have um, uh, a lot of patients uh, right. falling under those specific groups, yeah. Well, Doctor, it was lovely speaking to you. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have uh, this evening, but uh, just final remarks briefly from you. Yes, so we are going to launch our Namibian Heart Trust uh, uh, on the 25th of March, and I developed this to 
uh, uh, to actually abide by the egalitarian principles, which is um, they did not give themselves this heart disease, so they deserve to be cared for, and quality should not be dictated by the ability to pay. Uh, it should be dictated by the need, rather. So the, the, the whole point of this uh, trust was to actually make sure that we have accessible, affordable, um, equitable um, uh, quality, efficient, patient-centered, and uh, sustainable health care for all Namibians born with congenital heart Thank disease you. from children to adults, uh, irrespective of the socioeconomic circumstances. And we are completely optimistic Thank that you. it's going to be a great success. Thank you. Dr. Shidika, thank you so much for your time this evening. Lovely having you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here tonight. Well, on that note, we end this evening with uh, entertainment. Now, the Namibian entertainment industry was shaken by the news of the loss of well-known music producer Arafat 